Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode on the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we have the regular season finale here in the Cup Series. But of course, first up, we have the Xfinity Series here at Daytona. Of course, the Cup Series comes to Daytona as well for the uh, Coke Zero 400. So, very excited for this race. Um, just not really knowing what to expect. You'll see, of course, the playoff grid before we come into this one. We also have some very big silly season news potentially coming here in this episode now as we are are ready though to get this Xfinity Series race underway here in Daytona where we had Kyle Busch in the car here. This will be probably his final race in the Xfinity Series this season in this number 54 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota Camry now as they head down towards turns one. Brandon Jones was actually on the pole for this race here so uh, definitely looking to get to that bottom lane Kyle was but I can tell you right off the bat this is actually a very very rough race for Kyle Busch and you're going to see how rough it was as we go on here now as he was running in that last spot of course you can't really qualify very well here at Daytona or any play track for that matter now as you go down this back straight away so Kyle trying to move his way forward he would of course get to that bottom lane and start to make a little bit of ground here as he was up the inside of that 0-8 car but there you see Riley Herbst on the far outside as we go down the uh, front stretch and I can tell you guys right now something that's very interesting in the Xfinity series is that Noah Gregson and Justin Allgaier are currently outside of the playoffs due to uh, just drivers winning races like uh, we had Brandon Brown win a race and just a lot of drivers that would not have pointed their way in have won their way into the playoffs and that has put Gregson and Allgaier, two junior motorsports drivers, outside of the playoffs right now with just a few races left in the Xfinity Series regular season. So definitely uh, some work to do for those drivers. They're going to have to win. That's the only thing Gregson and Allgaier can do to get themselves inside of the playoffs at this point. They must win a race. So definitely running out of time, of course, now. As you see, as this race went on, Kyle clearly struggling. He wasn't even up to the midfield area at this point now. As we came through a little bit later, he passed the uh, 90 car as he was really struggling to just make his way forwards. And it was getting very frustrating, uh, of course, for Kyle Busch to just try and gain any ground. He goes to the outside here on the uh, outside of Landon Castle there in that 89 car as it come through at a turn two but then he now is going to make a three wide down the back straightaway there with castle and then the 13 of chad fincham who won the daytona 500 earlier this season uh in the cup series of course now fincham of course running full time here in both the xfinity series as well as the cup series but of course that daytona 500 victory did not put him in the playoffs because he had fallen outside of the top 30 in points there was, there was contact between kyle bush as well as landon castle and he would continue this fight we come through to the final lap actually of this race here in daytona and he just had gone nowhere. It was just one of those races for Kyle Busch that just went completely wrong. A very miserable race for him as he's three wide down the back stretch. Someone behind actually was smoking here. There was a little bit of uh, contact with Landon Castle as they went down through turns three and four for the final time here in the uh, Coca-Cola 250 at Daytona. But Kyle unfortunately was never actually able to get past Landon Castle as he comes through down this front straight away coming to the line. He gets a nose there under him but he comes to the line there just short of passing Castle at the line here in the Coca-Cola 250 and Kyle Busch unfortunately comes home in only the 24th position so a very very rough race here for Kyle Busch but of course now we have the X, uh, uh, the Xfinity series is done we have the Cup series now is Alex LeBay ended up winning the Daytona race so LeBay now uh, with his second victory of the season as we come through though to the Cup Series weekend here uh, in Daytona. So very excited to get this one underway here. Of course, uh, of course, I knew that qualifying would, of course, be a last position effort, but I decided to do it anyways. Now as we go down this back stretch towards turns three, and I was just curious. The biggest thing I was wondering is, will Jimmy Johnson go and get four poles in a row? We're about to find out now as we come through the trial. Well, Jimmy Johnson has won the last two races, and like I said, he has now gotten... Uh, to uh, three poles in a row trying to make it four right here so of course we qualify in the last spot and i was going up through the order looking like oh my god jimmy johnson actually might be on the pole again but no he's actually only seventh so on the pole we have ryan newman here in daytona as we get ready to settle the playoffs now and decide the 16 drivers who will advance into that playoffs now as we start the night off though with some breaking news here in daytona clint boyer was said to be replaced by chase briscoe in the 14 car next season and this has come as a bit of a shock right before the race time we get this news now but Boyer has confirmed that this will also be his final season in NASCAR so Clint Boyer is retiring at the end of the season as we come through though in to Daytona look at Clint Boyer's career so far 
10 Cup Series wins, 4 poles, his best points finish was 2nd, uh, now over uh, uh, eight, year, 8 years ago or so in 2012, now as you see the playoff grid coming into tonight's race, Jimmy Johnson now with 2 wins on the season, but Matt Kenseth, but you want to look at 14th really through 19th, that is really the big picture, Elliott comes in 19th to the good, but Bell all the way down in 19th is only 20 points out, he can still make it into the playoffs, and of course someone outside of that could win their way in now, as it's going to be very interesting, as I am going to have actually a bit of a live points uh, system in this episode that you're going to see a few points here throughout this race. All right, guys, one last race here in the regular season. Hopefully, we can get a few playoff points. That would be really nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think we should just try and help Christopher uh, get in. That's probably the smart thing to do at this point. So you heard the radio transmission from myself right there saying that I think the smart thing to do is help Christopher Bell try and get in the playoffs. An affiliate teammate, of course, we're going to try and help him get in the playoffs here tonight. Now, as Ross Chastain starting at the back of the field after failing optical scanning station multiple times, now you see the pole winner of Ryan Newman, who is locked into the playoffs on points. I think we might actually have to change Ryan Newman's rating. He shouldn't really be running as good as he is, in my opinion. Now, as we get ready, though, to decide the playoffs now as the green flag is out here in the Coke 0400, and we are underway for the regular season finale the first time in the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode where we're going to decide the regular season finale here at Daytona. So very excited to get this race underway here. Uh, I've been kind of waiting for this one all season long as you just, who knows what's going to happen here. Anybody can win their way in. Tyler Reddick, he's in a must-win situation and unfortunately right off the bat there you see Christopher Bell starting at the back of the field. He is not inside the playoffs but of course he is close enough to point his way in but he's definitely going to need some stage points and a very strong finish here tonight in Daytona. Chase Elliott, he really really just needs to stay comfortably inside the top 20 and he should be able to uh, comfortably make it into the playoffs here as he's made a late uh, regular season charge to get into the playoffs now as of course he actually did give away a win a little bit earlier uh, this season and unfortunately that uh, put him in this position to where he had to actually punch his way in now as it come through down this front straight away to the inside of Alex Bowman who's as well locked into the playoffs already on points as long or as well as Kevin Harvick is too as we go down this front straight away going three wide up the inside of Harvick and Bubba Wallace is we dive down into turns one. A driver that we could maybe watch out for here is the 73 of Eric Jones. He could potentially win his way into the playoffs here tonight, but actually, Jones is not declared four points here in the Cup Series, so he will actually not be able to make the playoffs. Now, as we go down this back straightaway, so maybe Bubba Wallace or something could win this race and lock himself into the playoffs now and completely change everything again now as we go down into turns three, getting past Harvick, so we're now up to P34 here on the second lap. So definitely uh, comfortable with the way the car was feeling at this point. Of course, only two laps complete uh, as Ryan Newman comes through to lead the way. But of course, was trying to stay on this bottom lane as I had a draft partner behind and it was Christopher Bell. So of course, I didn't decide to help him right off the bat here in the race uh, because, I mean, I didn't think we were really going to make much progress together being this far back now. Uh, and there, as you see, Clint Boyer, the news, of course, just coming out that he is retiring after the season. There's a jump up to the outside here seeing if we can make something work. But then immediately, yes, he's slowing 17 car of Chris Busher. Busher has been running pretty strong in this regular season, but unfortunately just doesn't find himself in a position to get into the playoffs without a victory as we look up the inside of Eric Almarola, who's right around that cut line, of course, as well. So he is in need of a very good night now as we go down this front stretch, continuing to go three wide up the inside of Ryan Priest. There and uh, Michael McDowell is on the far outside. Seven laps to go already in stage one. Only 11 laps here in the opening stages. Denny Hamlin was out front at this point now as we came through a little bit later, though, on the end of lap five. Corey Corey LaJoy had now taken the lead in that 32 car, so of course LaJoy could win himself potentially into the playoffs as we come through crossing the line. So now we come through though on lap 6 down the back stretch. We actually have problems! Clint Boyer just went crashing into turns 3. The news freshly coming out here in this episode of him retiring. He crashes. The green flag stays out as I did keep relaxed cautions on because I wanted to see how that would play out at the play track. Boyer though is out of the race. A huge playoff implication as Boyer will now for sure miss the playoffs here as that's a big development here in Daytona. Clint Boyer in his final season of Cup Series competition will miss the playoffs unless he gets an absolute miracle which is not going to happen now as we go down the back stretch. So uh, of course uh, very unfortunate for him as that just happened out of nowhere very early in the race and that makes it worse for him because he could have maybe got some stage points and gotten lucky if that happened at the end of the race. But of course it being in stage one completely wipes his chances of realistically making the playoffs. So at this point now as you see myself getting aggressive there going three wide up the inside between Suarez as well as the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 
Ricky Stenos, of course, locked into the playoffs with that win earlier this season at Sonoma, which I felt like we could have won that race if we didn't completely choke everything away. Uh, but, of course, Stenos was able to pull off the victory from that one here as we continue three wide in the middle. William Byron just in front of us now. Of course, he's uh, in a very risky situation as well in the playoffs, and I wasn't going to do him any favors. I actually leave him up to dry here down the front straightaway with two laps to go in stage one, and now we're up inside the top ten at this point as we go down towards turns one. Byron and Elliott, if they both make the playoffs on points tonight, they will make it on all four Hendrick cars inside the playoffs. Johnson, the only driver on Hendrick Motorsports this season with a victory, which is a bit of a surprise to be saying here, as we did come through, though, to start the final lap of this first and opening stage. And Corey LaJoy, after he took the lead here in stage one, well, he did not lose it. And you can see just kind of how weird. It was very, like, spread out feeling here in this pack in Daytona on this final lap of the first stage. And unfortunately, we're now down to P14 being on this outside lane as we dive down towards turn three, trying to get under that two car in Harvick. He's actually going to get clear, so we're going to dive down now behind that four car of Kevin Harvick up the inside of Brad Keselowski as we come through out of turns four, heading down this front straightaway for the final time. So Corey LaJoy is going to come through to win stage one. Doesn't really help him at all. He needs to win the race, but we come through to cross the line here to get a solid P13 finish in this first and opening stage here in the Coke uh, Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona, uh, at Daytona International Speedway. So, of course, we would come into the pit lane for two cans of fuel as well as four tires. But I'm going to get a live points update. You can see, though, a lot of the playoff bubble drivers actually were not up in the mix at all here in the top 10 to get stage points. So a lot of missed opportunities for some drivers on the outside looking in. Uh, now, as Jimmy Johnson finds himself quite a ways down the order, Christopher Bell, though, did pick up one point, and that one point really could be the decider at the end of tonight's episode here in Daytona. Now, as the green flag is out, and the second stage is underway here in Daytona. Of course, for us, we have nothing to lose. We just want to try and win the race, but of course, we also want to help Christopher Bell there. As you see, we're now P12 uh, at the restart there. As you see, the live playoff leaderboard on your screen now as Elliott comes into stage two. 19 points to the good. Boyer still six to the good after that DNF. Uh, Bell, though, is now 12 points out. Almarola 13. Kansas 6. And Cole Custer is in a must-win situation at this point as we come through at a turn two. So hopefully uh, you guys like that little live leaderboard uh, graphic. I'm going to tweak it a bit uh, when we get to the playoffs, but you're going to see that throughout the playoffs now. So I definitely uh, hope that you guys like to see that on the screen. I think it'll kind of create a little bit more immersion and as well give us some updates throughout the races there as we actually into the outside wall there as I got a big push from Brandon Keselowski and him trying to help me actually hurt us both here as we go down this front straightaway. So unfortunately he just gave me such a big push that I just casually pushed up the track into the outside wall. So uh, hurt the speed of both of our cars but we're still up here inside the top 20. Now as Keselowski gives us another shove here as we go down towards turns one behind the 21. Amanda Benedetto. De Benedetto must win this race as well to get into the playoffs as we come through turns one and out of turns two. Kurt Busch now leading as he's locked in on points as we're three wide or they are three wide in front of between De Benedetto, Logano, and Dylan, there's, there's a lot of contact going on. Logano was kind of just sliding all around there in between them, and he's looking like he's just going to commit here to the three wide in the middle. So I'm actually going to follow Logano here and join up with him now, as this might not be the greatest move there. So there's almost contact with the 95 of Christopher Bell here as we go down the front straightaway. Now we pick up Logano as a draft partner as well. Behind, we got Brad Kozlowski, Logano's teammate, as a draft partner as well. So, of course, just trying to work our way through and maybe get clear of Christopher Bell and potentially pick him up as well here as we go down towards turns one, but not the start we were looking for here in stage two, but we would get clear of Christopher Bell and stay with Logano, but then I actually hung Logano out into turns three. Of course, Logano well uh, locked into the playoffs, so I don't feel bad. We're just hanging him out like that now as we come through out of turns four. There was actually just a little bit of contact as well made there with the 22 on the exit of turns four here as we're still outside of the top 20 here with six laps to go as Logano not giving up there as we're we're still three wide, but now you see some smoke up ahead as we go down towards turns one. The caution comes out at the halfway point here on the second stage, and now we're going to, uh, of course, uh, not come to the pit lane because we have enough feel uh, to get to the end of stage two. So we're going to stay out and just get ready to go back into the action here for what will be now a late dash for the end of stage two. A lot of stage points up for grabs for a bunch of drivers that are on the outside looking in that are in that bubble area, but not really seeing much potential from those drivers except 
it for really Christopher Bell now as we're back though underway here in Daytona only three laps to go in the second stages they're gonna get another live look here at the playoff leaderboard so Elliot still 19 points of the good at the time of the caution Byron now finds himself 11 points of good so he's gained a few points but the same situation though from Boyer down to Almarola and Cole Custer who's in a must-win situation now is they're already three wide in front of us Chad Fincham on the far outside of course uh, a lot of potential for an underdog winner here today in Daytona like we had at the Daytona 500 earlier this season when Chad Fincham won the Daytona 500. So if we saw something like that here tonight, uh, we could see a massive playoff shakeup again here as we dive down towards turn three with help from the 10 of Eric Almarola there for Stuart Haas Racing. Almarola really needs to pick it up here. Otherwise, he could definitely be at risk of losing his ride here in the next season or two as we come through. Passing the 22 of Logano it certainly helped that I had a big push from Almarola here as we come through. Two laps to go already now in stage two as I jump up to the outside, but then I stay down behind because I did not want to get stuck there behind the 96 of Daniel Suarez. So we continue through. We actually got past Suarez just riding behind McDowell. And then we got through here behind Chad Fincham as we came through to start the final lap now of the second stage. Ryan Newman had now actually taken the lead here on what was this final restart of stage two. Uh, so he started on pole, now finds himself up front as I get in line there behind Christopher Bell. Unfortunately, Bell not going to get any stage points, but I decided hopefully we can uh, help him out a lot in stage three. We're going to have to focus a lot in that third and final stage on helping Christopher Bell get into the playoffs because I think without my help, he's probably not going to get into the playoffs now. And we want to, of course, have as many JGR cars as well as affiliate cars in that uh, playoff grid to help us here as we come through down the front straight away Ryan Newman holds off Stenhouse to win stage two and we come through crossing the line to just barely beat Austin Dillon for P20 uh, so not a good stage two for myself uh, but you did notice William Byron was actually up there in the mix which will really help him on points here uh, going into this third and final stage here in Daytona. All right, guys, uh, we're really going to need to help Christopher now at this point that was not a good stage for either of us so yeah I'm going to be giving everything I can to help get him in. So there you heard the radio transmission again from myself at the end of stage two. Really just the main goal. Just now focusing on Christopher Bell if we can uh, and try to help him get into that top 16. Now as we did gain one spot on the pit lane we're now up to P19 for the start of the third and final stage as we line up behind Brad Keselowski now as the green flag is out and we are underway for the final stage. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. leads here at the start of stage three. 13 laps to go here in Daytona so not a lot of time there as you see the playoff leaderboard once again. So now, William Byron is actually tied with his teammate at Chase Elliott. They're both 19 points to the good. Kenseth, uh, six points out, still behind Boyer, just because those drivers on the outside looking in have not been able to pick up any stage points. So Boyer still finds himself in the playoffs right now. And, of course, now uh, it's pretty much a given that he will not make it now, as obviously there's points for every position at this point here as we go down the back straight. I was trying to help Christopher Bell get in line here on the bottom. Of course, Bell being up on that second to third lane, he's going to go nowhere. So, of course, I'm now trying to leave a hole open for him so he can get down to that bottom here as we have the double zero of Quinn Hoff my outside but unfortunately Bell could not get cleared by Keselowski now as we go down this front stretch coming through to complete the first and opening lap of this third and final stage now is of course now the intensity starts to pick up at this point with so much on the line William Byron finds himself in the second position behind Stenhouse could he do what he did in real life and get his first career win at Daytona he is certainly in position to do so at this point now as we go down this back straightaway still side by side with Quinn Hoff now now is there three wide in front of us Kozlowski, Bell, and LaJoy on the far outside here as we go down towards the turns three. Matt DiBenedetto just behind myself. Of course, he has to win as well here as we now get up the inside of Bell. And then I see Kozlowski nearly clears him as I back out of the throttle here as we come through out of turns four. But there's going to be an opportunity right there for Christopher Bell to get down to the inside. So I back out of the throttle once again. And thankfully, he finally gets down in front of us here with 11 laps to go. So I decide we're going to get right up to the back bumper here and get him hooked up as a draft partner. And now myself and Christopher Bell are going to try and work our way through the field together and sure enough we would start doing so we would climb up into the top 15 now with 10 laps to go still behind Brad Kozlowski we were as we're up the inside of Cole Custer who still has to win this race there so there's a little bit of contact on the back of Bell but just sticking with him the best I can to make sure we get him into that top 16 as we pounce there to the inside of the Penske driver and 2012 Cup Series champion of Brad Keselowski. So now we come through down the front straightaway here at the end of lap 32 coming to lap 33. Just staying glued to the back of that 95 now as we have entered the top 10 at this point here as we go down towards turns one. So we're making some very solid progress here with Christopher Bell towards the front now as Tyler Reddick actually took the lead here in Daytona and in the top two were Reddick 
and John Hunter Nemechek. Both of them winning this race would really shake things up as we continue to push Bell up towards uh, now almost into the top five as he's up into that sixth position as we're to the inside of William Byron there as we go down the front straight away crossing the line. Six laps to go here in Daytona. Sure enough, we push Bell to the inside of Timmy Hill and we get him now up inside the top five as we exit turns to Bell sideways here as we go down the back straight away. A huge save as he's still slipping everywhere but he makes a huge save down the back straight away. Not sure if that was my fault or not there as there was a little bit of contact between himself and I. Telling him I'm sorry right away. I did not mean to do that. I don't even know if that was my fault. There you heard the radio transmission from myself apologizing right away. I didn't know if I was at fault or not for that one, but we had Bell still up here in the top 10 actually now pushing me as we came through trying to run this group of cars back down that we lost contact with due to just trying to not cause a crash there with Christopher Bell now as we would continue to just move our way forwards. We're now leading the second lane because they were all running in front of us on the top. Stanhouse here right behind William Byron. Ryan Newman trying to take the lead there from John Hunter Nemechek, but they actually, the top three, kind of drop a little bit lower. Uh, but now Newman gets to the end inside of John Hunter Nemechek and Ryan Newman who got the pole earlier in this race now finds himself leading here coming in just three laps to go now as Bell continues behind me now at this point though I was going for a win so we come through crossing the line three laps to go we unfortunately lose Bell as a draft partner but I was confident enough that he would get the points at this point now uh, to get into the playoffs now as we get to the inside of Tyler Reddick and all of a sudden we find ourselves in second place there but a little bit of contact with the apron but we have a big push coming from behind from John Hunter Nemechek as we go down this back stretch of course we can not have a surprise winner otherwise that will completely ruin the hopes for Christopher Bell getting into the playoffs now as we go down this back stretch approaching two laps to go here in Daytona as we close in on the back of Ryan Newman uh, I took a quick look behind and you could see Bell was still moving his way forwards so everything kind of working at this point now as we come through out of turn four linked up now with the six of Ryan Newman we kind of have him right where we want him down the back stretch now with two laps to go I try to make a move to the outside and then go back left unfortunately Newman covers that well I did not really kind of I guess you could say quote unquote Deke him good enough now as we come through uh, turns three and now to turns four now coming to the final lap here in Daytona. We're going to need some help from John Hunter Nemechek if we really want to successfully complete the pass, but unfortunately, Nemechek is too far back as the final lap of the regular season is underway. Myself and Newman fighting for the victory now. As like I said, I'm going to need some help here as we come through turns one and turns two right towards that back of Newman. We need to get ready to try and deke him out once again down the back straight away using some kind of hockey terms now as we come through down the back stretch for the final time. Nemechek's close, but not close enough now as I pull left. Newman, he pulls left. I pull even further left and he's going to defend very well there as he came down at the last second I honestly should have turned him right there as we come through turns three for the final time here in the Coke Zero Sugar 400 at Daytona International Speedway there's more contact and with the apron as well and that really slows us up as we come through down the front fadeaway for the final time here in the regular season finale Ryan Newman wins in Daytona we come through to cross the line to finish in the second position redemption uh, for Ryan Newman with a Daytona victory here as we come through in the runner-up position Christopher Bell came through in P4. Jimmy Johnson up there in P17, but you see some of the bubble drivers. Eric Amarola outside the top 20. Kenseth 37th, but Chase Elliott 38th, but uh, Kenseth finishing 37th, and Boyer being so far down, Elliott should very well be in the playoffs still. Uh, now as Christopher Bell as well actually beat Chase Elliott by one point, so both Bell and Elliott are in the playoffs. Uh, so uh, Elliot fans you should be happy now as we see after the race we are in the playoffs I did not have a post race interview after this one, but uh, there should be one uh, in the next episode So we're gonna see now the official playoff grid after Daytona Ryan Newman pulling off the victory. Honestly um, I tried to just pull left down the back straight away on him and he just covered it so well And honestly, I, like I probably had a chance to turn him if I wanted to uh, But I would have felt kind of bad as well if I just completely dumped Ryan Newman for a win at Daytona now as uh, I always um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, you do know what to do But like I said, of course, we're going to get a look here at the playoff grid going into the next episode where I believe the playoffs start at Darlington now if I'm not mistaken Yes, they do so that's gonna be an interesting one as the Xfinity series still has two races left in the regular season where Gregson and Allgaier need wins to get into the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting as well in the Xfinity Series to see if Gregson and Allgaier can come in clutch and get one win apiece and put both of those JRM cars in the playoffs there. Now as we come through though to check the Cup Series uh, point standings where of course that's of course what we care about the most. We come into the playoffs in our rookie season only 12 points above the cut line. We did not get enough playoff points. Uh, but we're going to go over all the driver stats in the playoffs in the next episode going uh, to start that one. We'll uh, show everybody's driver stats there as you see the four drivers out 
right now. So it's going to be interesting, and I'll see you guys in the next one where we go to the Southern 500 here in Darlington. Very excited for that one. Going to be a tough one, but we'll see what we can do in Darlington in our first ever playoff run in our Cup Series Square. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.